In the past few months, we've seen an explosion of interest in artificial intelligence. So much so, the market's fascination with smart machines and their creators has been likened to the dot-com boom of the late 90s. But the implications of recent advances go way beyond share prices. For better or worse, it seems we are at a tipping point and we need to very quickly figure out how, as a species, we're going to coexist with machines that are better than us at doing many tasks that we thought were the unique preserve of human beings. So here's the question. Is this technology going to make our lives easier? Is it going to help us become more productive or will it simply render us irrelevant? How will AI disrupt industry and business models? What are the ethics around the responsible use of AI and can they be enforced? I'm Jeremy Maggs and welcome. This is No Ordinary Wednesday. It's an in-depth look at what's driving markets, shaping the economy and changing the game. Here with me today to answer some of those pressing questions are Investex Chief Artificial Intelligence Officer Lee O'Brien, along with Michelle Shonken, Data and AI Lead at Investec Bank and Investec Wealth and Investment. Lee and Michelle, to both of you, thank you for joining me on this edition of No Ordinary Wednesday. All right, Lee, let's start with you. And what exactly is artificial intelligence and why has it suddenly become an unavoidable dinner table topic? Yeah, artificial intelligence isn't just one thing. It, it's really a constellation or an umbrella term of many different technologies working together to enable machines to sense, comprehend, act and learn with human-like levels of intelligence. And I think why it's sort of now becoming a dinner table topic is because it used to be this science sci-fi on the big screens that was this foreign thing. And now all of a sudden it's it's within reach and understanding and it seems quite quite benign actually. People can get their heads around it a little bit. For the uninitiated, how are AI and machine learning related? Uh, machine learning is an application of AI. It's, it's the process of using really mathematical models of data to help a computer learn without direct instructions. Machine learning really has three aspects to it. You've got a, a supervised learning aspect to it, an unsupervised learning one, and a reinforced learning one. Supervised is really where you show it a bunch of cats a million times over, and then it'll learn that's a cat. Unsupervised learning, for example, is if you showed a bunch of data and saying, have a look at it, what do you see? And uh, maybe recommend where you see some clustering, for example. And then reinforced learning, by example, is where you set goals and reward its behavior. So the machine will learn if I do that, I get rewarded more. And, and it's typically in gamification where you, where you see that reinforced learning happening. But quite interestingly, or more importantly, machine learning is a subset of AI, but deep learning is a subcategory of machine learning. And that's really best suited for handling high complexity decision making like recommendations, speech recommendation, image classifications. But you also get an element of natural language processing that comes in there, which is really what sort of kicked off all this chat GPT stuff, because that really talks to how natural language is understood and how natural language is generated. So let's pick up then on uh, on chat uh, GBT. A, a lot of hype towards the end of last year. Uh, it's woken up non-technical people to the power and the potential of AI to, to mimic uh, artificial or human intelligence. We've seen some tools that create astonishing imagery based on basic prompts. So the question I think to you is, how do these type of tools work and why are they important in the broader AI landscape? Yeah, great question. Look, I think for years we had suspected that artificial intelligence is going to take over the world, but we just didn't anticipate it was going to start with the world of arts and literature. So if we, if we look at the, the GPT or the generative pre-trained transformers, what they really do is they give the humans the ability to, to with word prompts, you can input questions or instructions. And what that really translates to is a computer program that fully understands human language, how it's spoken and written. So, for example, ChatGPT was trained on giving it a whole bunch of text, you know, internet-based text, such as books, web text, Wikipedia, and web articles. And interestingly enough, it was fed around 300 billion words to make it learn to, for it to understand what that context of the language is. And then as a language model, it works really on statistical guessing. It, it says statistically the next best word in the sentence is this, and it will provide the word. That is sort of a very simplistic explanation of how it works, but it obviously then introduces the ability to have inaccuracies or what you'll start hearing is, is hallucinations that you can see when it sort of very confidently and speedily generates a bit of text that looks optically correct, but it's 100% it's inaccurate. 
Before we get to Michelle, uh, let's talk about the notion of learning then and the impact that AI is having on human beings, for instance. And there's no doubt all of us in one way or another have dabbled with it. But universities, I'm reading, have banned the use of chatbots for assignments. But that's a reality, surely, that we've now got to face up to and we've got to deal with it in a more constructive manner. I think AI is yet to stay. It's not going to go away. And I I do feel that the educational system should embrace it for multiple of reasons. I think, firstly, it's not just about generating the results and submitting the assignment, but I think it has a fantastic opportunity to make people ready for when they enter the workforce where they will run into any form of AI. So best, why don't we use this as an opportunity to educate people? And secondly, I think the idea is that people should understand how AI works not you know at the technical level but uh, its limitations and it's, and the ethics around it so i feel that there's a opportunity here that the educational system should embrace i do feel i can understand why they sort of put the blockers up i think firstly as a as a reference is that it might not get the answers right and people need to apply critical thinking really to see through what they're being presented and then obviously there's the whole plagiarism element but i think that's a short term thing that the education system is probably trying to get its head around it I suspect the uh, the impact on critical thinking is an entirely different discussion. Michelle, you've been listening to that. Let me bring you into the conversation now. Let's focus on the business world if we can. How are businesses going to be affected? What's your take on AI and the way in which the world of work is going to change? You must be looking at that closely. Um, Jeremy, I'm not sure we fully understand how AI will disrupt the way we work as more and more tasks are automated. However, human workers are unlikely to become obsolete. We believe that AI will continue to drive innovation going forward. We are seeing the emergence of how business apply AI and how this is maturing to drive business value and insights they may not necessarily be aware of today. It is used in various ways to create efficiencies by automating and optimizing processes and avoiding human error. We use cognitive technology to improve our decision-making ability in understanding our customers and tapping into their various preferences. And it also helps us to understand and manage risk around cybersecurity and fraud more effectively. We're also seeing how we streamline and democratize AI across our businesses. I think businesses will have more freedom and flexibility to access the latest AI capabilities today um, without necessarily having large investment in hardware and software, um, leading to more agility to deploying AI solutions and enabling our organizations to drive and and bridge the AI skills gap. However, I'd like to caution that with greater accessibility comes greater responsibility in how we use this, uh, how we use AI ethically. So I think it's a given, uh, Michelle, that humans and machines will have to work more effectively uh, in the future. But is this technology going to have a net positive or a negative impact on jobs? From a human and machines working together effectively, personally, I think AI will complement and augment human capabilities, not necessarily replace them. Um, We've seen research in the Harvard Business Review found that organizations achieve significant performance efficiencies and improvement when both human and machines work together and enhance their complementary strengths. The machine's ability to process and analyze large volumes of data quickly, um, which really remains impossible for humans to do, will complement our human strengths of empathy, leadership, teamwork and social skills. I think humans play an important role in how we train machines to perform tasks, explain the outcomes and sustain the responsible use of AI going forward. Which then begs the question, I guess, do you think it's going to lower barriers to entry in certain industries which would then enable greater competition? I do believe that it will um, lower barriers to entry. For me, it's not an either or, it's a both. As AI is democratized more and more where these industries will gain competitive advantage. I think it is how we use this technology and the data at our disposal to remain competitive that will be the differentiator. The boom we are seeing today could make these incumbents more powerful, um, the likes of Google, Meta and Microsoft, which essentially will entrench them in our lives more and more today than ever before due to the computational, financial and intellectual resources at their disposal. I think the incumbents' access to this data is both powerful but also flawed as it tends to deliver correct information sometimes. So we really do need to ensure that our data is trustworthy and, and that would also provide us with some competitive advantage going forward. 
We are going to continue this conversation in just a moment. Before we do, just a quick reminder that a new episode of No Ordinary Wednesday drops every fortnight. Please don't miss it. Subscribe to Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like the channel, please take a moment to rate us. Lee, let me come back to you then and let's look at the financial sector in particular. To what extent in these early stages then is it disrupting financial services? Uh, Is it, for instance, changing the way in which we save our money or invest? Yeah, I think I I would link it up to what Michelle's calling out there. I think it goes without saying that data is queen, right? I think that's going to be the the oil that drives us forward. I think if you look at the financial services from the the low end spectrum of how this is influencing our world to the the more sexy bit, on the low end, less sexy, I think you've got the operational efficiencies that can be had, you know, deploying AI models to drive advanced automation. I think at the end, the customer or the client benefits because you get a, a better client service through that. You can see disruption coming through in risk management, where you can deploy very advanced game-changing risk models. Then if you drift into the predictive model side, where the better you can predict the future, I think that, you know, you've got a ticket to that game. And I think with with the advanced machine learning that we've seen come through, the higher the accuracy, the, the, the better your investment strategies can follow from that. But I think the real changer for us is the hyper-personalized client experience, where the AI is really, that's the battleground where it's all happening and some of the social media companies would have driven that very hard for for a long while but i think the financial services is picking up on that where you can generate you know more insights you can customize it really specifically for your client and then then you can respond with great agility and speed to those insights So my next question then is, and leading on from that, how should individual investors be thinking about AI? The sense I'm getting is that they need to be open to it. Look, I think investors generally, I think when you scrutinize anything, whether it's AI, fintech, you know, the steel company down the road, you have to look at it on sound business principles. And I think this wave, as I said earlier, the AI space is really hot. And if you look at some of the funds that are popping up that you can invest to like bots or robo or arc or any one of those, they're all specializing in their own domains, whether it's from self-driving cars or, you know, any any robotics in between. I think you got to scrutinize it. But I think the more you arm yourself with understanding the landscape, the better you will make some of those investment decisions. So, Michelle, back to you then. And I guess we're only at the very beginning of the debate around ethics. But uh, having looked at it, what are some of the ethical considerations around the use of AI? And let me tack another one on there. Uh, How do we make sure that it's used responsibly? Sure. I think, Jeremy, AI is only as smart as the data it is given. Um, I think we need to recognize that. And therefore, we'll reinforce what it has already learned on that given data. The adage, garbage in, garbage out. Some of the ethical considerations are around how we use AI responsibly. We address potential bias to promote transparency. Um, and then we share data privacy and how this data is used. And we are able to explain the outcomes and how we've used this data. From a responsibility point of view, defining policies and frameworks to govern and regulate AI will not be easy, in my view, as AI is made up of a variety of technologies. The rapid progress and development that we are seeing today, and no doubt will continue to see, may mean that some of these laws become obsolete going forward. Um, I think technologists, regulators and businesses will need to work together to regulate the use of AI, ensuring that we help machines make ethical decisions by providing humans with an explanation of how a decision was made, why it was taken, as well as to validate a decision in line with organizational policies and safety. I think we therefore need to make sure we monitor, retrain, secure, explain and justify these models appropriately. And what about the concern about manipulation? I believe it is certainly justified. The technology is advancing rapidly from what is termed previously as scratch learning, where we provided a very predefined data set, applied an algorithm, and we almost knew what the outcome was. I think one of the trends we are seeing is around transfer and meta-learning, where the machines mimic human behavior and intelligence by simulating how we sense, learn, process, and react to information. In addition, exploitation of human biases, utilization of AI strategies around consumption of online goods, or really taking advantage of our human vulnerabilities to promote services and goods and product that match with our current emotional state is how I believe AI currently manipulates us today. So some form of regulation is important then, is necessary? Absolutely. 
From a regulation point of view, it's emerging across all levels. The European Act is expected to be finalized in March 2023, as, as we are led to understand. Potentially, it's being used as a template around the world. Currently, we are regulated by GDPR outside of SA and the Papier Act around general data privacy and protection and the right to explanation. I think these regulations may shape how we address and look at AI, much like how we have to think about data privacy and data management with Papier and GDPR, which will essentially force us to apply and define data practices and how we manage this information going forward. A, a huge trend we're seeing is how we explain these AI models and whether regulators will impose the need for AI algorithms to be transparent and explained to humans. Uh, Lee, back to you. All of this, of course, is moving at warp speed. So what kind of things am I going to delegate to AI in the future? Yeah, I think it's it's closer than you think. I think we are, as humans, we are quite habitual. And as we've called out, AI is very heavily data-driven. And uh, so we're already being recommended music because of our choices of Spotify or other, other commercial channels are available or what we watch on, on us favorite streaming media. So you, you're already seeing that come through. My personal one that I've been watching quite closely, and, and it's being heavily pushed by the UK government, is obviously self-driving cars, autonomous cars. I, I believe that will be a, a massive disruptor to pretty much every industry that you can think of, from insurance, finance, you know, owners of vehicle ship, taxi services, anything like that. So I think um, it's it's sort of seeping through quite benignly, slowly, but I think it's it's based on habitual data. It's building up, and then and very much a strong reinforcement from from the UK government on self-driving cars. Well, as long as they can help navigate the potholes, but that's also another debate that we know, don't need to get into here in in South Africa. How weird, Lee, uh, is it going to get? Do you think? It is interesting to see some of the use cases and how weird it gets. One of the things of you know everybody is sort of reciting as what they've asked ChatGPT to do. But what I've picked up recently is is the writers of Games of Thrones have, have asked for alternative endings. Please, ChatGPT, write me a different ending to this thing. So you can kind of see already some supplementing the supplement you know it's not saying write me the whole thing just write me the end i'll do the beginning you you finish it off so so it's sort of uh, different spins on creativity coming through and then uh one of the, the craziest things I've experienced quite recently um, with Investec, we were down in George for an immersive experience whereby I was particularly looking at um, how food is being distributed between the informal settlements and excess. So where, where you know, fruits or whatever is going to go off in, in main mainstream shops and then how they can distribute that back to, to sort of where it's needed. And they had already adopted in on WhatsApp a little app that people can take a photo saying, I've got, I don't know, 10,000 and coleslaws going off. Here's a photo. So it the photo gets taken and gets sent in and it actually identify what fruit, veg or what it is. And it also gives a sense of when it's going to expire going, well, you've got about a day on these. And that's really in, in informal settlements in Georgetown adopting machine learning. And I was blown away about how, how absolutely creative and resilient, you know, people adopting this. Yeah, I mean, not only creative and resilient, but also very altruistic, too. I think that's a really good issue. Um, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, ask each of you the same question. And it's an A or B. Michelle, let me come to you. No prizes. Um, what's the most likely scenario going forward? That advancing AI is going to enhance human capacity and empower us or lessen human autonomy to the point where we are worse off? I think for me, it's around how AI will enhance human capacity. I think we're seeing this through AI-powered language tools today, which is ChatGPT, how we can bridge social and cultural divides and make healthcare more accessible um, in other tooling around AI. I do caution, however, and do believe that there is a dark side to AI, which could result in disaster for humanity. And I think this is where regulation for me plays a huge role. Uh, Lee, I'll give you the final word. What what could be darker, I wonder, than Game of Thrones? <laughs> I'm going to go with C, both. Um, I think it touches a little bit on what Michelle's calling out. There is a dark side, but I, but I, I sort of link it to the distribution of technology. Those who have access to more, I guess, have the ability to do more with it. And, and AI will be no different. So you'll have enhanced human capabilities and empowerment for those who have access to more. And I think those who don't have will fall further behind. You know, So there's an element of how do you make sure that it's equally accessible to everybody in a way that they can implement it practically for them. So I didn't go with A or B, I'm afraid. 
What a fascinating conversation. Uh, Leo Brian, Michelle Shonkin, thank you for joining me on this edition of No Ordinary Wednesday. Just a quick reminder, please join us again in a fortnight as we continue to explore money trends shaping your world. If you haven't added us yet to your podcast feed, search for Investec Focus Radio SA wherever you get your podcasts and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, goodbye from me, Jeremy Maggs, and the entire Focus Radio team. The views expressed are those of the contributors at the time of publication and do not necessarily represent the views of the firm and should not be taken as advice or recommendations. Investec Limited and subsidiaries, authorized financial service providers, registered credit providers, and long-term insurer.